Hey, it's Bobby back for another video, and this one's going to be a revisit on the topic of brewing pumps. I did a pretty extensive video about two years ago about integrating pumps into your brewery. So if um, you want a more deep dive into the overall picture of adding a pump to your brewery, I'll link to that and I invite you to check out that video. This one's specifically going to be looking at a new pump that has come into the market recently. And now that I've used it extensively for my own brewing and also put it through some stress testing, I feel confident that I can talk about it with some experience behind it. And we'll also look at the manufacturer's specs and do some compare and contrast between the new pump and sort of the classic chugger pumps that we've been selling for several years. So first we'll, uh, we'll review the incumbent player in the market. This is uh, the chugger stainless steel inline pump. It's an AC voltage uh, 120th horsepower pump available in either 115 volt or 230 volt. And it's uh, got magnetic coupling to the impeller inside the stainless steel head. These pumps have been out for about five years now and they've been you know, constantly improved by the manufacturer. It's a, a really nice pump, does the job, it's robust, and it's a pretty good value, especially considering the fact that you get a stainless steel head out of the deal. So that's the, the pump that sells quite a bit. The new player is the Topps Flow TD5 24 volt DC uh, mag drive pump. And you can immediately tell it's a much smaller pump. But one thing that, to notice is that the, the heads are very similar. They're both stainless steel inline heads. It almost looks like they were cast from the same mold, but they are different enough that they are not interchangeable. The chugger is about eight inches long about six inches wide and about four inches tall. And the tops flow is about four inches long, about five inches wide and about two and a half inches tall. The chugger's mount is actually a, a plate that's welded to the casing of the motor. So this can be hard mounted to your brew stand with four bolts or so. The Tops flow, on the other hand, comes with this flexible rubber mount that you kind of struggle a little bit to get around the motor housing, but once you do slide it, it's got a nice firm fit on there, and you can then attach these uh, two mounting points to your brew stand with a, a set of screws and um, being rubber, it does provide some anti-vibration uh, so that any vibration that it might generate doesn't go into your brew stand directly. Whereas the, uh, the chugger doesn't have any kind of anti-shock mount. You could probably put a, a slab of rubber underneath here that will help a little bit in that regard. Let's talk about the weight a little bit. I'm not sure if it matters all that much, but I'll show you an application where it actually may matter. I don't know if you can read these, but... Uh, Chugger pump weighs uh, 5 pounds, 14 ounces, so just under 6 pounds. The Topps Flow 24 volt DC TD5 is 2 pounds, 0.5 ounces, so I'll just round that down to 2 pounds. So it's about a third of the weight. Now, neither of these pumps have the ability to pump air, which is to say that they are not self-priming. They will not pull a suction on the input until liquid is in the head and being ejected out of it. So uh, both of these require uh, flooding with, with water before you turn them on. So there's real, really no difference between them in that regard. The Chugger AC motors are either 115 or 230 volt. The Topps Flow pump comes with an AC adapter to, to convert to 24 volt DC which uh, disconnects right there. And it also comes with a power cord to get the AC voltage into the adapter. And then just like a laptop adapter, that plugs in there. Um, the cool thing about this adapter is that it doesn't care what the AC voltage coming in is. If it's between 100 and 240 volts, it will still generate the appropriate 24 volt DC. So that is nice to just, on face value, having a pump that will adapt to any AC voltage that you may throw at it. 
But where this really matters a lot is if you get into building an electric brew system that has a controller, let's say you're running 240 volts into your control panel so that you can you know, have a high powered element firing in your, your boil kettle. If you wanna be able to put a switch and a pump outlet in that same control panel and run a 115 volt pump off of that same control panel, you're gonna need four conductors coming into that controller. You're gonna need two hots, a neutral, and a ground. And the neutral is required to derive the 115 volts. So a lot of these controllers that you find on the market that have a pump uh, switch and receptacle, you'll find the inlet wire has four prongs on it. So if you're trying to leverage a, uh, an electric dryer outlet so that you can get to brewing pretty quickly without calling an electrician, then that's gonna be a problem for you. Now, on the other hand, if you use the top slow pump, because the adapter can take 240 volts, no problem, you can now use a three wire uh, power supply into your control panel. So everything inside your control panel will be 230 volts and you will not require that fourth conductor or that neutral. So you might even do things like, you know, put this entire um, adapter inside your control panel box and then in order to have a switch, you might just add the switch to the 24 volt DC side of things. So, you know, it's nice and safe. You don't have high voltage at the switch. I think the TD5 is much more flexible and versatile and definitely lets you get away with a three wire source instead of going to the four wire. All right. So if you're doing electric, that might matter to you. Now, performance wise, you might look at these two pumps and go, there's no way that this pump is going to perform anywhere near like the chugger because the motor's bigger and, you know, Anyway, the manufacturer's specs are very similar. The, the chugger claims that it'll push up to 17 foot of head pressure and the tops flow is more like almost 15 feet. So the, the chugger supposedly will push two feet additional height. We're going to test it at two different heights and uh, measure the flow rate. And we'll also get to hear what these pumps sound like uh, audibly. I marked this gallon jug to the exact gallon mark using weight. I put this on a scale and measured it. And uh, we're going to test both pumps to two different heights uh, on equal ground and see which one performs better. One thing I want to mention before we get started is that I have absolutely no idea which one of these pumps is going to perform better or closer to their rated specs. And I don't really have any bias that I'm aware of in that regard. Um, both of these pumps are about the same price and I make about the same amount of money on them. So I'm just as curious as you are. So here's the test bed that I set up. 10 gallon pot with five gallons of water inside and that's room temperature water. And I have the chugger pump plumbed on one port over here. And it's, you know, the inlet's hanging directly off of high flow plumbing here. So there's absolutely no restriction. I have the top flow TD5 on the other side there. Again, full port everything. There's no restriction on the inlet or outlet. I'm going to be running eight feet of half inch ID silicone to a racking cane slash whirlpooling arm that I just kind of clamped to the side of the pot. And uh, we'll run each pump individually to see sort of what the whirlpool performance looks like without doing any measuring, you know, just kind of like observing it. And then we'll start getting into sort of the, uh, the uh, race between flow rates, okay? Now I'm wearing a lapel microphone on my shirt. And so I, I think it's probably going to give us a pretty good representation of the overall noise that each of these pumps generate kind of from the brewer's perspective where you might be standing. So I'll move around a little bit and hopefully you'll get an idea of uh, where it is. Or you know maybe I'll just hold the, uh, the microphone. Uh, sort of in a neutral location. Neither of these pumps is touching the floor. They're just floating on the, on the, uh, the fittings directly. So hopefully that's putting them on equal ground. When the chugger is not touching anything like a brew stand or a bench or a table, uh, the vibration is pretty well damped. Uh, it's only vibrating a little bit of the pot. The fuller this pot would be, the quieter it would be, because this is acting a little bit like a bell.
The Whirlpool action is what you'd expect. It's pretty good. I'd, I'd be very happy with that. All right, now we're gonna try the tops flow. All right, it's hard to hear the pump running. It's very quiet. Visibly, it looks like the Whirlpool action is about the same as the chugger, but you know, without knowing exactly what the flow rate is, it's hard to say. We'll compare them on the video side by side, uh, back and forth, and see if we can determine which one is significantly louder. But I'm pretty confident in saying that the top slow is more quiet. So right now I've got the Topps Flow TD5 hooked up to the tubing and we're running up to this gallon jug here. And I've got a timer set up. So as soon as I turn the valve open to pump, I'm going to uh, start the timer and we'll see how long it takes to get to one gallon. This outlet right here is four feet off the floor. That's 48 inches. And we've have about eight inches or so of water in the pot. So it's really about 40 inches of head. Let's just call it four feet for sake of argument. We're gonna test the same exact way with both pumps and let's see what happens. All right, I have the Topps Flow pump running. The water is completely full right to the top here. And I'm gonna start the timer as soon as I open the valve. There's the 14 on the timer. Let's do it one more time for consistency. Okay, here we go. I think it was a little more accurate that time. 14 seconds again, so pretty confident that 14 seconds is the number. All right, I have the same setup again for the chugger pump and that's currently running. And I'm gonna do the same timer. All right, here we go. Let's line this up so I don't get splashed. Okay. All right, I think I got it pretty well. I, I'm very close to there. I hit the timer, 11 seconds for this first run. Reset the timer. And trial number two with the chugger pump at 40 inches of head. All right, definitely got it that time, 11 seconds again. So I do have consistent results. Okay, the chugger is uh, 11 seconds and the TD5 tops flow is 14 seconds for the same gallon. And then we're gonna move the rig and go uh, higher head. The manufacturers publish a graph on the literature that uh, describes the flow rate decrease as the head increases. And both of these actually perform 25% slower than the graph suggests. Nevertheless, the, the both of the pumps are good performers. They will uh, both whirlpool probably up to 10 gallons of work, no problem. If you're looking for absolute maximum flow rate and performance, the chugger pump still wins, obviously. Um, so really what we're doing is saying, 
the top slow is about one gallon per minute slower than the chugger pump in the same scenario. So, you know, is that enough uh, to sway you to buy the chugger over the new top slow? I mean, I don't know. You have to kind of weigh that yourself. Now, even though the top slow is a new kit on the block, the performance is pretty darn good compared to how otherwise versatile it is being smaller, lighter, you know, voltage versatility and such that we discussed already. You know, I have the TD5 on my brew rig, which is a recirculating electric brew in a bag, you know, single vessel. And it was installed there because that's what I brew on and I wanted to really try the pump out and try to see if I can make it fail. I've even run that thing for seven days straight, 24 hours a day with absolutely no stopping and uh, it never failed or overheated or anything like that. You know, at the same price point, it's a really, you know, close race. I, I do uh, lean towards the tops flow, but, you know, it's not, it hasn't been out there very long. So, you know, just like with every new product, I don't really know um, in the next two, three years where my recommendation would lie. I just hope that uh, this video has given you enough information that you can make an educated choice for yourself between the two pumps. We stock them both. We've got them both for the same price. So I hope this was educational. And uh, so if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments or send me an email, bobby at brewhardware.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching.